And we want to talk this time about, uh, we've, we, we've talked about the altar. Let me get this out so we make noise, but at least it all gets recorded. We've talked about the altar, and then we've talked about the laver. We moved there, but, but the last time that I taught, which was a long time ago, <clears throat> we moved into the holy place, and then there are those three uh, pieces of furniture, and then there's a veil, and then the Holy of Holies, where is the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of the Lord. But after we dealt with the candlestick last time that I shared, we want to move on to the table of showbread. <clears throat> and the other object that's in there is the altar of incense. And um, since we've been doing 20 minute segments, um, this obviously is very, a very small portion of what the Lord has shared with me on all of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> but I try to hear from the Lord what he wants me to share, and it could be something small or it could be whatever. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is what matters to him that I share. And um, so I want, we want to talk about the table of showbread, but not just obviously the table, but the showbread. And basically bread, it is just bread. But throughout the scriptures, if you search the scriptures, uh, Old and New Testament, there are a lot of mentions of bread. And there's a lot of mentions of bread in relationship to the offerings, in relationship to the tabernacle. And, and they, they always include that the priest, now remember, we're all considered priests, you know. We're New Testament priests. <coughs> In reality, we're, we're a better word would not be New Testament priest, but would be the fulfillment of what the priests were always meant to be. Okay, so that's, that's great, except for there are very few people who know anything about being a priest for God. They just think it's, you know, pray and, you know, we talk about, you know, this is, this is not in the Bible, but we talk about being the, the husband is the, the priest of the family or something like that. We're all priests. And we're all, <clears throat> there's a relationship that all of this in relationship to the tabernacle, all of this is working toward. And, and it's all working toward something that God had in his heart before, um, really even before the law was given in that sense, because it expresses things, yes, that include sin, which the altar can deal with and everything. But there are things in there, such as when we talked about the candlestick last time, that it is beaten gold and it, re it represents deity. It represents God being beaten, Jesus on the cross. And we went through all of that. <clears throat> and so let's look at the table of showbread and if you have your Bible, Exodus 25. And Exodus 25 and thereabouts, around that is some of the, the most uh, significant scriptures relating to the tabernacle. It gives uh, a lot of good information, not just the building of the tabernacle, but also the offerings and things in that, that whole area. Exodus 25 and verse 30. Lord, let your, let your spirit be able to lift you up. May you find entrance into our hearts with the things that are in your heart and not just another class or another sharing, but an openness to hear beyond the words. Lord, I'm incapable of giving that ability or sharing that only your Holy Spirit can give us beyond the words into the very living word himself. And so we don't take lightly uh, our approach to you. We don't take lightly our approach 
to your word and to your, in this case, your word, your scripture, but maybe better said, your communications to us concerning your son and our relationship to him. And so, Father, we just ask you to allow the Spirit of God to touch us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, verse 30. Thou shalt set upon the, the table showbread before me always. <clears throat> always. You, you, he wants this bread before him always. All right. Now, if we're sitting here in a class, then we go, yeah, that must have been important to God that that bread be before him always. But do we ever just look at our own life and go, you know, do we have anything to do with bread? Um, and I, I'll deal with it a little later, but I do know that many times we, we have definitions of bread when it's not. Um, do we, as his priests, are we presenting that, and the word showbread uh, really is the word show. It is to display bread to God, and, but it's also put there so that the priest will, will see it regularly. So that this bread is something very important. And then it sits there for a week and then they bring in new show bread and then the priests eat the bread. It's no longer just something to see. It's no longer just something you look at. It's no longer something that you um, uh, fellowship in by pointing to because that's not true communion. No matter what we call it, that's not true communion just to talk about it. So, um, so let's just kind of follow a line uh, in the New Testament with, just, with Jesus. And early on, Jesus dealt with bread. Um, you find that over in Matthew chapter 6. This is one of the first times he brings it up. <coughs> Matthew 6, just verse 10 and 11. Very familiar scriptures. <coughs> Matthew 6, 10 and 11, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So in these verses, Jesus gives us two things. Jesus is giving us what he wants to happen. It's something he wants to happen, which is his kingdom to come in earth. We were made from the dust of the earth, in earth, and it, that kingdom be exactly as it is in heaven. Okay, the government be the same. It would be it would be like describing a vine and a branch, and you would say, uh, "I want the branch to have the exact same life as the vine, the true vine." Um, <clears throat> this is having the same government, and you know you can go off. You know, you can go off a lot on the kingdom of God, um, but, you know, to me, the kingdom of God is anywhere Jesus governs, where he rules, and he doesn't rule just by commandment, but he rules by his nature, and he rules us by his nature, and we are to be ruled by that same nature. So that kingdom, so, so this is what he wants to happen. This is what, you know, teach us to pray. Okay, I'm going to tell you exactly what I want you to pray. Okay, stop praying all the time for granny. Not that you don't pray for your grandma. But, but, or, you know, somebody hurt their foot. You know, there are, there are probably a million people on that same day that hurt their foot. Okay, now I know, you know, Jim is now the pastor, so he's supposed to pray over your feet. But I'm some, whatever I am, I'm telling you that Jesus says there's some things that are more important to be praying for. And this is what he's, it's coming out of him, and he's the son of God. And he knows his father. 
and, and he's in relationship with him. And he also helped, you know, he created this whole thing. So he knows what the real needs are. And, uh, and I believe, I believe that if we, f if we follow him into any of these paths that we're talking about here or whatever, if we follow him into it, not just follow him along with it, but follow him into it, <clears throat> that he will either heal us when we need it or leave us a physical mess when we need it. <laughs> oh, Brother Randy, don't talk that way. But I'm telling you, he, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's good for him to knock us down. You know, sometimes it's good to get past this earth and the feelings of this earth all the time and to go, this, this hurts, but this is more glorious and this glory can overshadow you. You know, and that's what it, that's what it says of Mary. That, you know, that the Holy Spirit came upon her and overshadowed her and she brought forth Jesus. How many of you want to be overshadowed? You know, and I understand aches and pains and stuff more than you know that I do. Because, you know, but, but our fellowship is not in our sufferings. <laughs> you know, our fellowship's in his sufferings. And how many of you, you know this, but, you know, how many of you have been sharing and ministering the word, or not, not ministering, but just sharing with somebody, and boy, you ached all over, or the person you were with ached all over, and the more you shared the word, the more you literally forgot it. It didn't, it didn't even that the pain went away. It's like, you know, but you felt free and happy and, you know, and... Probably if you just tried to focus back down and just shove the Holy Spirit out of the way and look, you'd go, my gallbladder or whatever, you know what I mean? But, but there is this place that you can come to. And so I'm just saying that Jesus is leading us in prayer, but he's not just praying, he's teaching us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. All right, so <clears throat> this is what he wants to happen. Thy kingdom come, Father. Thy will be done in us, in earth, in earthen vessels, as it is not just filling up heaven, but as it is, the, as it fills God, as it fills Father, as it fills Son, as it fills Holy Spirit, to be overshadowed so that Christ comes forth. Okay? By the Holy Spirit, by the way, overshadowed by the Holy Spirit who came to, to impart, not just to teach, to impart the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> All right, so um, first he tells us what he wants to happen, and then he tells us how it will happen. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. The kingdom is going to come by eating daily bread. And we'll see this. We'll go, you know, <laughs> it's almost over with, isn't it? Um, but we'll see this, and we'll see Jesus talking about it, all right? <clears throat> so just the first little glimpse into that, and I say the first glimpse because this, even though most people think this is the biggest glimpse, it's not. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 26. And all I can think of when I think of this scripture is Jesus' words. It is, to me, it's as if I'm sitting there and he says, take, eat, take. But you have to take first. Amen? And then eat. This is his words now. Okay, so let's listen to it. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. Okay. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, of course, he goes on to say, this is my body. But I thought it was kind of funny that as they sat eating, he took something, he broke it, he blessed it, and he gave it. And he said, 
take and eat. Well, Lord, we're already eating. We're eating with you. We're fellowshipping with you. We're supping with you. And he'd go, well, you are sitting with me. We are eating food, but we're not communing yet until we're communing over what's important to the Father and what's important to me. Okay. So he gave to his disciples. He gave to those that are, have dedicated their heart to follow Jesus, to hear Jesus, to know Jesus, to be transformed. Take, eat, this is my body. All right, so the daily bread he wants you to eat is him, is his body, is to become, to put that broken bread on the inside of you. And this is going to be the theme throughout every time he talks about bread that I bring up from the scriptures um, along this way. You began to see that there is a, a deep uh, movement. It's a movement of the Lord, the way that he, he uses all these different scriptures that he speaks from. He's moving in a vein that he's trying to communicate to disciples that discipleship is not sitting in a desk and learning. It's not just following me around and watching what I do and you learn what I do. It's not passing all your tests, you know. It's none of that. It is, I say this to my disciples, take and eat. And this is, he says, this is me. This is, but this is not just me. This is broken me. This is crucified me. Because it, it was whole bread. And then he broke and gave it. We'll see that as we go here. <clears throat> All right. Um, so uh, Matthew 15. Let's turn there. How many minutes we got? Should I quit now? How many minutes? Be honest. Come on. Two and a half. <clears throat> well, that's good. We're almost not even close. Um, all right. Well, we'll just go ahead and tackle this. Uh, 15, verse 32 and 33. <clears throat> so... Bre Let me just say, bread, ex this is why actual bread exists. It's all a picture of Jesus. It's all meant to be showbread, to show us Jesus in his broken body or his, or his selfless nature or his, uh, or his crucified uh, being or the lamb, whatever, whatever version you want to take. <clears throat> It could all be showbread if we would see him instead of just, you know, earthly bread. All right, verse uh, 32 and 33, Matthew 15. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him. Okay, so he's calling them unto him. He's not calling them unto the ministry. Come on. And he's not calling you under the ministry. You say, no, he is, he is. No, no, he's not, he's not. Because any ministry you have that you haven't come to him and then you come through him and by him and for him, it's just Christianity. It's just a, it's just a earthly ministry that you have claimed because you, you tended toward that direction or whatever. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days. Okay, so he's got compassion because they are continuing with him. And because they're continuing with them, they are running out of steam. And he has compassion on that. But his compassion isn't just on us because we're running out of steam. He knows that the real deal is we need bread. 
And if we don't eat bread, if we just if we just sit in a class or sit in a church service or whatever, and we just when we hear it, we go away still empty, yes. and we go away still hungry, and we want Jesus because He's the bread of life. And so our souls and our heart and our spirit begins to cry out, I want bread, I need bread. I can't, I can't go through this desert. Amen? Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> um, and I will not, uh, oh, and having nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Okay, so he has compassion because... And he will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. All right. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? All right. Uh, Lord, help me. So how do I say this? Uh, <clears throat> If, if I could talk to the disciples and the, the, the 5,000 and say what, what comes to me, which may or may not be the Lord, it would be this, you're whining or you're worried about this. God brought the whole nation through the wilderness, through the wilderness, and fed them bread from heaven. And you have... No, you're living here. You're not living in the reality of the word. You haven't grasped the word there, so why do you think you're going to get it here? Stop. Somewhere, stop. Focus. Get into the word and say, if I only get one thing this year, I am going to come away with him. I'm going to come away with him. And if everybody else appears, because a lot of times it's just appearances, if everyone else appears like they're really growing and you're being left behind because you only stuck with one thing, <clears throat> if it's life, it's eternal. And we'll see that later too. If it's life, it's eternal, which shall not be taken away from you, Mary. But just baking up bread, Martha, can be taken away from you and will be taken away from you because there's only that which is eternal. And, of course, we'll, again, it, the scriptures very much emphasize this point and we'll cover those, Lord willing, this, this next time around, okay? So... So I'm just going to read this and then we'll stop. <clears throat> First thing to realize, to Jesus, this is a replay of Israel in the wilderness. It reminds him of manna when they needed bread. And where do I get that from? Verse 33, and his disciples say unto him, whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness you see it's there it's there it's there and and most of you know where we're going to end up in the scriptures right john 6 okay john 6 and the whole thing that kicks that thing off is give us bread like they had in the wilderness and jesus says you're you're still in the wilderness unless you eat this bread. All right, so we'll stop there and we'll come back.